Good morning. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are doing well. <clears throat> Welcome back uh, to Nail School with Greg Salo. All right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on two design elements. It's actually one. It's marble. I uh, had a couple questions about it and wanted to be able to show you basically how you're going to be able to achieve it, not just with acrylic, but how you're going to be able to achieve it with gel paint. Uh, there's different ways of marbling, swirling, trying to get kind of a swirl effect and then actually creating a look that looks like a, you know, like a marble countertop. So I want to be able to show you guys uh, how you're going to be able to execute uh, the design. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use cover blush, right, to build the body of the nail. I'm going to put a smile line in and then what we're going to end up doing is taking uh, speed white and epic black from slick pour and I'm going to marble the free edge and then uh, I'm going to do the same exact thing uh, with gel paint. I'm going to do a different type of marble effect on the surface so that you guys can see uh, how it works. Uh, don't get nervous. Dude, I don't never get nervous. All right, here we go. All right, so what we're going to do is, this is the nail that I did yesterday, and we're going to save this one for later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use cover blush and um, I'm going to be able to show you guys how to build with this. Um, remember when you guys are sculpting, it's really, really important that, uh, especially when you're working with this powder, this powder picks up pretty easy. So if I submerse my brush and I tap, you're gonna notice how easy it is for me to pick up a really, really nice bead of acrylic on one side of my brush. Um, you see how it gets nice and smooth. It's the consistency that you want so that when it releases, it just comes off really, really easy, okay? Uh, for those of you guys that are just working with acrylic, what you don't wanna do is this. You don't wanna take your brush and remove everything off and then do this. Don't, don't drag, because it's gonna leave you with a crappy pearl on the end. What you wanna be able to do is you wanna be able to submerse your brush tap it so it's swollen and that way when you bounce into the powder you're going to get a really really nice bead just like this i'll get a little bit closer so that you guys can see now you have to remember if i'm going for if i'm working on a surface like this i'm trying to execute picking up a pearl that's about half the size of the nail bed right so lengthwise um how long is a nail bed to give you guys? If I take a hand file and I just line this up, right, the length of the nail that I'm working with, right, is about that long. Uh, it's quite big. Um, so what I need to be able to do is I need to be able to pick up a pearl. So submerse my brush, I'm going to be able to tap, and then I'm going to bounce, 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 maybe three bounces, right? You can see how that's about half, half the size. That's exactly what I want to be able to get. Okay. What you're going to like about this is Cover Blush gives you a lot of workability. It really gives you um, basically a, a, a lot of play, which is exactly what you want. So if I submerse my brush and I pick up a, a nice bead, right, then what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to say that that's just a hair too small, I can tell. I need a little bit bigger, so just a little bit more liquid, uh, a little bit more bounce, give it a couple seconds to settle, and then what I wanna be able to do, oops, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me go ahead and just take that off really fast. That's why I usually keep my brush the opposite side. Don't be afraid, you guys. If if the bead just comes off, like take it off. Don't, don't try to... Um, don't try to wrestle with, with something that's not going to, to settle well. So you can see how it's sticking. So what I'm gonna do is once I set this down and I release it, I'm immediately going to use the tip of my brush to kind of push this nice and flush around the cuticle area. And as I do that, 
you're going to notice that it's not going to really, really run. So what I have to do is I have to kind of use the body of the brush to kind of bring it down to the smile line. Right? I need to bring the body down right, by pressing this flat. And then what I can do is I could use, again, as I, you notice, I'm, I'm constantly going around trying to get this as tight as I can because I'm trying to build a really, really nice, deep smile line that goes all the way up to the top. At any point, um, you're going to notice, I'm going to give you guys bird's eye view. So this is a little bit off. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to adjust it with the side of my brush. So what I'm doing is I'm using the side of my brush just to kind of slightly adjust my edges. Uh, I notice that this side of my smile line is probably a little bit off, so I'm going to just kind of push from the top right, to kind of straighten out that shelf. So once I actually have my smile line in this position, then I'm looking, I want to be able to show you guys down the barrel of the nail. Like it, a lot of times when you're doing reverse application, you're like, okay, well, it doesn't look absolutely perfect. It looks a little bit too flat on the surface. That's not a problem. You could always take a small blending bead. And then what I'm just going to do is just add a really, really small amount on the surface just so that I don't um, overfile once I'm done. So I'm just going to just add a small amount to the surface. I don't need it too, too crazy. Constantly working around the side. A little bit of a dry piece of glitter right there. And then once I'm done, I'm going to let this sit, okay? So that's, uh, that's perfect. No, this is not a core powder. This is a, one of the cover powders. This is called Cover Blush. This comes in the Ultimate Kit. All right, so once we've built this out, then I can focus on, I can really focus on putting on my form and then focusing on the marble design. I make it look so easy. That's, that's the whole, like, if I make it easy, that means you can do the same exact thing. It just takes time and practice. It's getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. That's what it is. All right, so once I actually take my form uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-pinch it all the way. I'm going to hold this here at the base. You're going to notice that, again, I get it underneath. I use my hand. Let me bring the hand in focus. I use my hand here to lift it up, lift it up so that it's even. All right, so one of the things you can do um, that's going to help you guys tremendously with your with your marble design is to build a, a, a really thin platform that's going to be flush to the natural nail. So what I could do is I could take a little bit of speed clear or core clear, whatever you choose. I'm going to get a really, really small bead. Don't have to have it um, super thick. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this down. And with the tip of my brush, I'm literally just going to tip and like almost a little bit of the body. I'm going to work this up flush to the nail, right? Flush to the natural nail, okay? Today I'm gonna do, I'm gonna really focus more on a kind of a square shape, active length square shape, right? Okay, so you can see that I've butt that up. I've butt that up right up to the nail. Why have I done this? Well, the reason why I've done this is because when I marble the acrylic on the surface, I'm going to have a really flat, you see how flat it is all the way up to the edge? This is really, really important. If you're looking at the side profile as well, you're going to notice that it's going to be like, from this point all the way out, it's going to be nice and tight. And that's what we wanna be able to, that's what, we, it's really, really important to do that because there's no, there's no ledge. Like the natural nail, let's assume this is the natural nail and we put the form up and we want to be able to get it as tight as we possibly can. If you were building the acrylic on the form, you're dealing with a ledge. So when you're, you know, when you're marbleizing the acrylic, you're going to have this drop. We don't want that drop. We want it to be nice and flush. Okay. So at this point, we can go ahead and switch out to our color that we're going to marbleize. I'm gonna go ahead and get speed white. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Slick Pour Epic Black. Oh, it's really black. All right, and what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to, I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get my pearl, I'm gonna to touch this, right? I'm going to set it down. Sorry, there's a little bit of, I'm gonna set it down and then I'm gonna use the black to kind of marbleize on the surface. And that's how we're going to kind of achieve um, that marble type of look. All right, so first, let's do this. Okay, I have this. The, the, the acrylic is starting to set, so you can mold the free edge. It's all, you can always mold the free edge so that you have more C curve. All right, so if I take my white, all right, give it a couple of seconds, I set this down, and then what I'm gonna do is take black, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm literally going to just kind of pull the black with the white and the acrylic while it's wet, all right? So I don't wanna overdo it, but what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to create, as you can see, a really, really nice marbled tip. So that's, that's how you're going to be able to marble acrylic powder, okay, onto the tip, okay? So that's the first, first style. If there's any parts that are missing, like you could always just get like really, really small beads. And then what I could do is just kind of add it to the corners to fill, right? Maybe just a hair of black, just to add it right there into the corner, okay? And then once we actually have that uh, built out, my recommendation, again, I'm looking at all sides, I miss that corner as well. I could come in, just kind of get really, really small beads. I can kind of touch the areas to add the color where I need it. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cap with we're going to cap it with speed clear. Just a very very small bead of speed clear. I don't need to overwhelm the surface. I just have to make sure that what I apply over the surface is going to allow the free edge to set. It's going to allow the free edge to set for me to be able to create that marble design. Okay. All right. So. Let's just go ahead and let this sit while it dries. I'm going to show you guys how to create basically the effect on top of an enhancement as well. Okay. Working with the acrylic is always going to be challenging because you have to, um, uh, you have to work with the product while it's, while it's wet. Let me go ahead and just clear up my station. Sorry for the, for the mess. Um, and, and the key is setting the acrylic down and then working the, the, the darker color uh, into the surface while the color is still basically wet. If, if you set the bead down uh, while it's dry, and I'll give you guys an example. Let's say um, you're practicing uh, marble and you have, again, two contrasting colors. You have black and you have white, okay? Um, one, of the, one of the, I'd say, the, the toughest things that, this is totally set. One of the toughest things, I think, for any beginner is, is this. If you pick up the bead and you, again, you wait too long and then you set it down, and then you try to go in for a black, a smaller black bead, you're gonna notice that like, even if you set this down, that, that's fine, but what ends up happening is you can see how it starts to muck up, like it, it's too thick, it, it's almost too thick to move the acrylic, it becomes like paste. Um, this is a very, very hard consistency to be able to control. Um, if you're doing any type of acrylic work, um, you have to catch it 
in a very wet state. So if I was going to take, again, uh, white, right, and I set this down, I want to be able to set it down really, really wet and then touch the black so that you can see how, like, I could use my brush, right, to kind of create this type of marbling effect which is really, really thin, really, really cool. This is great for background work. Um, if you're doing design work and you wanted to establish any type of background, you'd be surprised at what you can do by just marbling acrylic onto the surface. But you have to be able to catch it while it's wet so that when you use your brush, um, you're going to be able to get through it. Okay. Uh, let's get to the gel. So this was the gel nail that I did yesterday. And uh, one of the things we want to be able to do before I remove the, the top coat, uh, kind of primed it, and then what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to take a little bit of protein bond to the surface because we're going to be doing gel paint. Uh, for those of you guys who have mission control, this is an awesome way for you to create this marble defect. All right. I have a tile and what I want to be able to do is take a little bit of a fizz, which is uh, the white. I'm just going to take a small amount out and put it right here on the tile. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing with overdrive, which is black. Just need a small amount. Again, just right here. You'd be surprised at what kind of, like if you wanted to create gray, I'll show you guys something really cool, how well this blends. But if I was to take just a little bit of white and black and I blend this, they ain't, ain't gonna get me jack. <laughs> That's, I'm gonna kind of gray this down. You're gonna see how well it blends. But just by using the spatula, Right, and just pressing down onto the surface, you, you're going to be able to really work in a, a beautiful gray if you decided to do that. You see that? It's pretty awesome. Pigments are incredible. Um, they don't settle, which is amazing. Um, they're absolutely incredible for doing design work. There's a ton of really, really talented nail artists out there that are doing just off the friggin' chart designs with mission control. Okay, so what we're going to end up doing is taking a little bit of the white and I want to be able to paint a, a really nice background. So I'm just scooping the white up and then what I'm going to do is just with a thin coat, I want to be able to paint the surface. You can see how well uh, the paint goes on. Don't worry about um, trying to paint it absolutely flawless without streaks. You don't have to worry about that. What I'm doing is I'm really just focusing on trying to get a really nice, even thin coat by brushing it through real, real heavy pressure, just like this. And then once I'm done doing that, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the light and I'm gonna go ahead and set this. So the first initial cure um, I, I honestly want probably about 30 seconds uh, for it to set inside the light. Remember that Mission Control cures tack free. There is no tacky layer. Um, it's awesome because uh, when you're chroming or you're doing certain design work, it's it's. It's unbelievable. Okay, so that's 30 seconds. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use I'm just going to use one more coat, right? Just to get uh, some of the I, I totally missed my edges right over here. So I'm using just one again, one more thin coat over the surface just to get good coverage. Two is going to be perfect enough. All right, so because we're going to do black over the top, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So I go ahead and set that down, right? Again, it does not, you can see, doesn't have to be super, super perfect. I'm just getting a nice, even 
uh, white coat over the top. I'm gonna go ahead and set this down again. I'm gonna go ahead and cure this out for 30 seconds. All right, I'm gonna give you guys this profile. Okay, so while that's curing, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to use this brush and I'm gonna be using a uh, Young Nail Striper brush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run lines around the edges, and then I'm going to use, um, you could use either swipe or you could use an acetone to kind of dab the surface to create the marbled effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch this out. Okay, so what we're going to do all right, you can do this with nail polish, but this is great when you're working with gel paint. I'm gonna swirl my brush into the black, right, just to load it up, swirling it into the black, just load it up. I'm just gonna take the tip and I'm just gonna to touch it, all right, just to make sure, boom, I have enough on the edge. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to just kind of run really, really fine lines. Right, and then just kind of join, right? To, to, all we want to be able to do is just use really, really fine lines. Same thing. I'm going to start off right here on, on, on the darker end and just kind of use this just to kind of bring this down, right? Okay, so once we actually have that. Uh, established. Um, then what we can do is, again, you could use an acetone or you could use a cleanser, but what I'm doing is I'll just go ahead and use onto the next polish remover and then I just kind of take my brush and just kind of dab the surface just to kind of get it wet. Uh, and then what we're going to do with, with the wet is I need, you see, I'm just kind of setting it onto the surface and just kind of running this around, okay? And then I'll just continue to work it. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but what we wanna be able to do is we wanna to try to create this, this kind of run. And then just to kind of create the, 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 the background show you what we're going to be able to do and I'll just keep on working around. So the, the, the great thing is that the acetone will kind of, kind of dry out. Okay, so this is going to actually create, right, just keep on working it just so that like it kind of runs in, into place. And then what, what I'm going to do is once I actually have the background kind of established, then what I can do is I could take my brush again and then just kind of run really, really fine lines again, just to kind of highlight, right? Just, just to highlight some of, some of the edges. Paint out some of the lines as you guys can see. That's just going to give it more, more detail. But once it, it totally sets and dries, then you're going to be able to just uh, set it inside the light. being really, really light-handed, just trying to create something that, that looks like marble, correct? Okay, so you, you can continue to work it a, a, around. I'm, I'm just literally just doing a little bit of detail work around the edges, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, it's about just kind of creating a uh, great texture. Um, the paint is not going to be too thick, as you can see, it's, it's absolutely perfect. So once we actually have that uh, set out in place, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and set this inside the light. I'm gonna just go ahead and set this 
enough so that it doesn't run. That's enough, right? And that you can see like it, it basically is not going to move. Then what we can do is we can go ahead and take finish and I can apply a nice coat of finish gel over the surface. So that's completely sealed, ready to go. So a great way of, of, of creating a marbled look. I need to make sure that when I'm setting finish inside the light, it has to be a full uh, one minute. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and set that inside the light and I'm gonna go ahead and file out the other designs so that you guys can see exactly what the acrylic looks like. That is dry and ready to go. Some of these comments are hilarious. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. All right, good enough. Let's go ahead and get to filing. All right, so let me just go ahead and put a little bit. Amazing again, what you're going to be able to, you can see that, right? You can see how smooth the surface is. It's not raised. Once it's sealed, it's ready to rock and roll. All right, let's go ahead and file this one in shape. So this is ready to go, and you're going to notice that I'm going to keep this dead square because we want to try to file. So one of the things I'm doing when I'm trying to file dead squares, I'm trying to keep the file as straight to the sides as I possibly can. I'm doing the same thing on the opposite side. My lower arch, I want to be able to line it up at the lowest point. I want to be able to file up to the edge. I want to do the same thing on the opposite side. I want to be able to file up and into the edge to make it dead straight. And then let's go ahead and file our smile line. I'm using a young nail safety bit. I'm going to run my electric, electric file around 10,000 RPMs. And one of the things you're going to notice is even when I'm using, when I'm filing from the side, I need to be able to file my upper arch in as I'm coming down the center of the body, all right? Trying to get my upper arch all the way in. And then you're going to notice that when I'm filing my C curve, I'm focusing behind the smile line. I'm focusing in one direction all the way down. And you can start to see my smile line come into effect. I'm going to come around the cuticle area in one direction. I'm gonna blend that ledge that I've created all the way in tight. And then I'm just going to file all the way through. All right. And let's go ahead and shape this. give you guys this view right here. Just remove that thickness that I have. What the heck is that? I'm just going to solid. You got a little bit too close. All right. Go ahead and file this from this range to make sure that everything is going to be dead even from side to side. You go ahead and take my buffer. Go ahead and buff this out. Let's go ahead and dust this off. I got a little bit too crazy, I don't know what happened. 
making sure that I blend it without taking it off. Very, very careful. All right. So once we actually have this cleaned and ready to go, one of the things you guys always want to do to prevent dropping everything, one of the things you want to be able to do to prevent it from chipping is you want to be able to put a really nice coat of protein bond over the surface and then whatever top coats you're going to be putting on top, what it'll do is it'll fill the space. So if there is any natural nail that's exposed to the back, one of the things that you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to anchor your gel right to that exposed natural nail. Go ahead and put finish gel over the surface. Then I want you guys to be able to see, right, that's how you're going to be able to achieve it. So two different looks, right? Two different looks. This one's all dusty. You're going to be able to create the marble effect um, all the way through. Um, it doesn't matter if you're doing it onto the surface. It doesn't matter if you're doing it onto the tip. You could create all different types of marbled um, finishes if you like. But you can see how, again, it's, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're doing it. But you're going to notice even from here, if I turn the hand around, because I did it with clear, so you can see, right, it's going to be white underneath. But it has enough thickness all the way through, which you're going to be able to execute on a regular basis. All right. So that, that's just two ways. There's, you could do it with nail polish. The method I did with gel, you can do with nail polish. Um, the method that, um, that you do uh, with acrylic, you don't have to do it on the tip. You could do it as a fade. Um, you could do it um, as a partial, like this one right here. You could run it in the middle and you can run glitter around the edges. Um, all right, so I'm reading a couple of comments on here. Um, my mannequin hand is so cheap. Which brand is this hand? This brand is Young Nails. You guys, I, I need to make this clear. You see this? It's a Young Nails trainer, right? It is not the same nail trainer that you see on Amazon. The Amazon no-name brand the tips do not pop in like this, right? They will pop off when you are filing. Um, when it comes to um, a hand that you're going to be able to practice on on a regular basis, you need uh, something that is going to stick, that's going to be able to push into it. And that's when it uh, makes all the difference in the world. It's definitely, more expensive, but again, yeah, the Amazon one sucks. I hate it. I saw that. So I saw that comment. Um, it's, you know, again, it's not Amazon's fault. Um, they just carry, they have a vendor that they deal with and whoever is selling it into the market, obviously it's a knockoff of the nail trainer. The nail trainer is what you want, uh, not the knockoff version of it. Um, all right, so hope this helps. All of you guys have a safe um, holiday weekend. If you guys are here in the States, uh, be safe. Peace.